now time for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. During Community Health and Wellbeing Week between September 26 and October 1st, 108 members of the Association of Ontario Health Centres across Ontario are mounting special events across the province around the theme Community Health and Wellbeing Shift the Conversation. The week is about starting a new conversation about health and health care in Ontario. Treating illness is important, but Ontario needs to do a much better job when preventing people from getting sick in the first place. Here, here. The need is urgent. Primary health organizations participating in the week include Ontario's community health centres, Aboriginal health access centres, community-governed family health teams, and nurse practitioner-led clinics. Throughout the week, they'll be organizing community events throughout the province to demonstrate the value and impact of their efforts, especially for populations at risk for poor health. One approach they're highlighting is how they put people and communities first. Each member of the association is governed by community members. These centers are run by community for the community. In my riding, that's how it works at Central Community Health Centre in St. Thomas, and this is in how it works for other community organizations throughout the province. The strategy the community health centers are also taking on is to prioritize health promotion. The goal is to prevent more in order to treat less. This is the kind of people and community-centered approach that prioritizes comprehensive health promotion programming and what you'll find in action in Ontario's community health centers. This is an approach that will promote the best possible health care and well-being for everyone. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from uh, Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just say no to Nestle's. I've been boycotting Nestle's since the 70s when Nestle's, uh, and they're still doing it, uh, were pushing formula on women in developing nations who didn't even have access to clean water and causing infant death. Some call that criminal. I would agree with them. Right now, Ontario charges uh, Nestle's just $3.71 for every million litre of water they take, and they're taking taking more than one million litres of water from a well in the town of Hillsburg, Ontario, and bottling it for sale every day. Now, Former Environmental Commissioner Ellen Schwartzel took the Liberals to task in her annual report for not acting on recommendations to raise the amount it charges to take large amounts of water, which she called a drop in the bucket. Schwartzel pointed out even the ministry conceded that $3.71 was just giving it away. It, cost one, it was 1.2 per cent of the government's total water quantity management costs. Quebec, by comparison, charges $70, $70 per million litres. We charge $3.71, overriding municipalities' calls. And only the Minister of the Environment, Mr. Speaker, can do something about this. We've got only a few seconds left. One, don't buy bottled water. Do sign the ca uh, uh, Council of Canadians petition. Uh, beg the Minister of the Environment and the Liber Liberal government to act on this and act now. Just say no to Nestle. Thank you. The member from Asian Court. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is an honour for me today to rise to recognize a 10-year-old student in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court, Adam O'Meara. On his achievements with Pokemon trading card game, Adam is currently a grade six student at the Islamic Foundation School. The Pokemon trading card game, not to be confused with Pokemon Go, is one of the most established games of its kind in the world. Adam ranks number one in North America for 2016 competitive season, first out of 500 junior players in Canada, United States, and his 1,245 championship points outranked players in Mexico. This past August, Mr. Speaker, Adam represented Canada at the Pokemon Trading Card Games World Championship in San Francisco. From the World Championships, Adam received $1,500 U.S. scholarship, among other recognitions. He currently holds the title as number one player in Canada. For a 10-year-old, Mr. Speaker, Adam is mature beyond his years. He has been playing for only one year and is participating in international arena. Mr. Speaker, Adam is a studious, determined young boy who constantly improves his skills by practicing two hours every day. As a result, he has acquired many skills, including responding quickly, strategically being focused, and accessing the various risks and its impact. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to congratulate Adam again on his amazing achievements to date, and I know all of us in this House will be hearing a lot about Adam in the years ahead. Congratulations, Adam. Go Pokemon. 
For the member statements, the member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise to share concerns I heard from my constituents over the summer. Over and over, I heard about the impact of high hydro rates. I heard it from seniors and families who are struggling to pay their bills. I heard it from businesses who are struggling to compete with companies in jurisdictions with less expensive power. And I heard it from municipalities who are struggling to attract jobs who, but are having trouble competing because Ontario's hydro, high hydro rates. The people of Ontario need this government to recognize the impact of their decisions on the cost of living and the cost of doing business. They have to realize the high cost of hydro, along with all other increases, is leaving people struggling to make ends meet. Mr. Speaker, I heard from people who are frustrated with cancelled surgeries and long wait times. They're frustrated that there isn't enough money for health care, but there is enough money for radio ads to tell us how well the government thinks they're doing. People in my riding continue to be concerned by the risk to our drinking water if the proposed landfill site is allowed to go ahead near the Thames River. And we are all concerned about our youth and how much they are struggling. I will continue to raise these issues because I believe that we can have an Ontario where people aren't scared to open their hydro bills, our drinking water is safe, and our young people have hope for a bright future. Thank you very much for allowing me to make this statement. Thank you. Further members' the statements, the member from London, Fanshawe. Speaker, I am pleased to rise to share the important work the NDP is undertaking to eliminate all forms of racism, including Islamophobia, in our great province. Dialogue, conversation, asking questions, seeking knowledge, these are all the things that combat ignorance and hatred. New Democrats have been working diligently to find ways to combat racism in Ontario. We have called for the, an end to arbitrary race-based police checks and carding. We pushed the Premier to finally set up an anti-racism directorate and have been vocal advocates for the series of public community meetings now being held in towns and cities across the province to address the directorate's mission and goals. Shortly, New Democrats will be introducing legislation to proclaim the month of October as Islamic Heritage Month. It's time to formally recognize the vital contributions Muslims in Ontario make to our vibrant social, economic, political, and cultural fabric. The sad reality is that Islamophobia is a very serious problem in Ontario. Every Ontarian deserves to feel safe and secure so they can reach their potential by learning and celebrating the contributions that Canadians of Islamic heritage have made throughout our province's history. We become stronger as a province. New Democrats believe to show, the true, le to show true leadership by standing by the belief that Ontario is at its best when no one is left behind. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. I was delighted earlier this month to attend an open house and ribbon cutting ceremony at Women's Habitat in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore that was held to mark the completion of renovations at its outreach centre. Thanks to a $66,000 grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation awarded earlier this year, Women's Habitat made enhancements to its program space in the installation of commercial kitchen equipment. I'm very pleased to have an organization like Women's Habitat in my riding that provides uh, services like individual and group counseling, transition and support services, housing assistance, and programs for women. As Sylvia Samza, Executive Director of Women's Habitat, stated, this generous support from Trillium could not have come sooner. Uh, the former kitchen was simply not able to accommodate the needs of an organization that serves over 9,200 meals each year. Many clients were advised, uh, advised staff that these meals are often the only meal they have during a day. And this renovated kitchen will allow for workshops on cooking on a budget and help eating for kids. Mr. Speaker, Women's Habitat has provided emergency shelter to women and children who are survivors of violence in Etobicoke Lakeshore since 1978. They've supported uh, this outreach centre has been in place since 2006, and we're all very unfortunate to have this organization in Etobicoke Lakeshore, and I'm so grateful for this support from Trillium, which will allow Women's yeah. Habitat to provide enhanced services to the community. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Statements the member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. I am pleased to recognize the success of the IPM 2016, the International Applying Match and Rural Expo. The town of Minnow, the county of Wellington, was home to this year's plowing match. Tens of thousands of people, including MPPs of all parties, saw the importance of agriculture in our rural communities. 
This year's theme was a fresh taste of farming. There were many highlights, the parade, the plowing competitions, the queen of the furrow competition, and the zip line, to name just a few. There was also plenty of food, including a farmer's market, food demonstrations, and samples. The tenant city covered over 100 acres and 500 exhibitors. Wow. For pulling off such a successful event, many people deserve our thanks. Chairman Ron Faulkner and the IPM executive for their tireless dedication and years of planning and preparation. The Ontario Plowmen's Association, Ann and Earl Snyder for welcoming us to their farm and hosting the IPM. Other landowners who donated 1,200 acres to be used for the match. And finally, the countless volunteers whose work make this possible. Dave Adsett, publisher of the Wellington Advertiser, put it this way. Although agriculture remains a vital facet of Ontario's economy, most residents are far enough removed from farm life that such an exhibition helps re-establish the connection between rural and urban residences. I totally agree. That's what makes the IPM such an important event for us all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well done, Milo. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Every year we celebrate Right to Know Week during the last week of September. This year marks the 250th anniversary of the world's first access to information legislation. Since 1766, when Sweden became the first country to recognize that citizens have a right to access unpublished information produced by its government, over 100 countries have passed some form of freedom of information laws. Next year, Ontario marks the 30th anniversary of our own freedom of freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. As I'm sure everyone in this legislative chamber today will agree, freedom of information is essential to a strong democracy and to good governance. And while we have come a long way in ensuring greater transparency of our governments and the public's right to know, we still have a very long way to go. Uh, and there are very real challenges to freedom of information in Ontario. In July this year, our new financial accountability officer, Mr. Stephen Leclerc, was again forced to complain about the Liberal government stonewalling his office by invoking cabinet confidence on requests of information. By refusing the FAO access, they are preventing him from doing his job as an independent officer of this legislature. Last year, I introduced a private member's bill that would further empower the FAO to gain uh, readily gain access to information needed to perform his duties by removing the cabinet confidence, confidence exemption. And I'd like to let the House know that I will once again be introducing this legislation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements. The member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Speaker. With your permission, Speaker, I'd like to introduce new terminology to the Ontario conversation, and that is the discipline of mad studies. And for that purpose, I would invite the House to please welcome Professor Jeffrey Rayom and his wife, Esther Lee Rayom. Professor Rayom has an, a remarkable history, diagnosed himself with schizophrenia as a teenager, went on to complete a bachelor's, master's, and PhD, and is now a professor of critical disability studies at York University. Right. He is here today to present speaker to us collectively to Ontario as well as to the Legislative Library, having just shown this book to the Premier. Uh, he's co-editor of a book called Mad Matters, a critical reader in Canadian Mad Studies. What this book and this entire discipline attempt to do is to move beyond the psychiatric or medical model of madness or mental health illness and actually talk from the perspective of the patients themselves. And that is what Professor Riom is an expert in. He's challenging the belief system that makes it okay to pick on, make fun of, discriminate, reject, silence, discredit, pathologize, dissenter, and kindly undermine and commit violence against the mad. And it's a remarkable, I have to say, as a physician and parliamentarian, somehow I missed the existence of this entire discipline. So I'd like to remedy that collectively and welcome Professor Rayo. Thank you. Welcome and thank you. I thank all members for their statements. And it's now